Uh, Ellen, what's happening? Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, let me just uh, call committee chairman uh, Ken Gersten from Fashion Square up here, Nancy Khalil for Best Buy Baronis, uh, Bob for Hillside, Bob Anderson for the Hillside Ordinance, um, and Ken, why don't you go ahead and speak and then I'll wrap it up. <coughs> One minute. Uh, I want to just address a few things about uh, development in the city, and the Hillside Ordinance is a good example. Um, many of you do live in the area that is uh, between Ventura Boulevard and Valley Vista, and your properties have been recharacterized to fit the uh, guidelines under the baseline ordinance, which means basically a 7,000 square foot lot can only house, literally, uh, 3,500 square foot new home. Uh, unfortunately, the City uh, Planning Commission, well, I, it really wasn't the City Planning Commission, it was more of the planners uh, that made the recommendations, Eric Lopez, felt that there had been sufficient notice to all of these homes. Unfortunately, um, we don't agree, but the appeal period or whatever we can do, our hands are tied. For now, that's why it's very crucial that you listen to the candidates tonight when they talk about land use issues how they're going to handle planning, how they're going to handle the conflicts of interest as we perceive them to be between developers preparing their own traffic studies and their own environmental impact reports. All of these things play very importantly into one key thing for all of you as homeowners, apartment owners, business owners, property values. And I also want to encourage you, please support Ventura Boulevard restaurants and businesses. Are you noticing the amount of store vacancies that are popping up? Well, it's up to us to support them. Okay, um, I also want to call to your attention a few other things. Uh, the city council race on uh, Council District 2 impacts CD5. You know, there's no barriers to traffic, to cumulative impacts, to congestion, to noise, all of the bad things that development brings. But there's also can be a good side. And in this particular place, not only do we have a chance to elect a council member, that's responsive to the community's needs for Council District 5, we also will have for Council District 2. For those of you that aren't familiar with the process, welcome to the world. It's kind of complicated, but the bottom line is, the best we can figure is after July 1, when Wendy Gruel takes leave of that seat, then the city hopefully will decide to appoint a caretaker and call for a special election. If they don't, then they break a precedent that for the last 30 years has enabled a caretaker to be put in the office, and they would appoint probably a political appointee of the mayor's, most likely the mayor's, because he will exert wanting to have, let's just say, more of a say on the city council, politics downtown, and uh, that, that person will be in place then to run for after 120 days, then either the caretaker fills that seat or the council appointee for 120 days, special election, and then that person most likely will be, or persons, will be in a runoff. So that means early next year will be the soonest we will have a seated council member in CD2. That's scary stuff. Should you be worried if you live in CD2? Absolutely. Because that means, sorry, no questions. Come see me after. That means there will be nobody that will be speaking on your behalf. So we're monitoring that situation very closely. The other thing I wanted to uh, say, parking meters in Sherman Oaks are going to be changed. They're going to extend the hours. You can see me for all the details, much like you've been reading citywide. And they will be doubled the cost and no more free parking on Sunday. So it should be in effect by the end of this year, probably early fall. But the city needs money, and you got to get used to the idea that um, we're not only facing in the city of Los Angeles a $500 million deficit, it is going to double in the next two years because the pension plans for the city employees are unfunded because the city negotiated so many contracts with all the giveaways to the unions that they were counting on the continuing revenue from the housing uh, sales and uh, taxes to continue to support the cost. But unfortunately, that's not the reality. So they're going to be looking to us. And yes, I think you, it's reasonable to say we can expect another trash fee increase. The other thing is I want to end for once with good news. Um, 
this comes on the heel. This comes on the heels of uh, tonight. You know, the city losing a lawsuit. Right now, it's a victory for activists and for all the people living in Los Angeles. And you hear this. Some of the people were parties to the lawsuit. And there's a lot of West Side um, West Side activists here tonight, so we should all give them a warm welcome. Why are you talking well, so fast? Because I'm always under the gun to get everything across. You got it. <laughs> all right. A Los Angeles County Superior Court judge has ruled that the city of LA acted illegally. When did it prove, hard to believe, when it approved a controversial desensification ordinance without first conducting environmental review of the potential impacts of the ordinance. The coalition of community groups, and many of them are here tonight, that brought the challenge, hailed the ruling as an opportunity for the city to redraft the ordinance to advance the twin goals of affordable housing and environmental protection. So right now our specific plan is kind of safe, but we do expect a, a, a filing to appeal this. A state law, Senate Bill 1818, and you need to just listen carefully tonight about that law, mandates that cities follow, I'm sorry, that cities allow density bonuses to developers proposing to build a percentage of affordable units at a proposed development. The LA ordinance that was the subject of the lawsuit filed in the case of April 2008 went far beyond the state mandate, in some cases allowing up to 300% of the bonus required by state law. So this is another example of the city council not doing its homework and now the question is will the city ultimately lose this in court or will there be friends of the court that will file briefs, law firms that help the city and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens so stay tuned and if you have any questions thank you see me at the end of the see meeting thank you. thank you thank you um,